How often have you seen one of these arguments start up somewhere? I see them all the time. And I thought, it's time for me to settle it. So the question is, do spoilers on cars actually work? Mm, no. Kind of, but you'll either have to weigh nothing, have a huge wing, or be going really fast. Okay, so I'm going to break this down into three parts. Looking at the effect of the wing itself, looking at the effects of the wing on the car, and looking at the performance effects overall. Okay, so let's do some simple maths. If we have a wing like this, where this is the front and this is the rear, then the formula for lift is this, where this is the density of the air, the velocity of the air, the area of the wing, and the coefficient of lift. Now let's say that this is about 1.8, which is a very high value. Let's say you're running a standard sort of WRX wing, which is about a metre wide and about 0.2 of a metre long, and we assume the density of the air to be about 1.2 kilograms per metre cubed, then we can calculate this formula, which means that our lift in newtons equals 0.216 times our velocity squared in metres per second. Let's say you're doing about 160 k's an hour, which is 100 miles an hour, which is 44.4 meters per second, then the lift available is 426.7 newtons, which is 43.5 kilograms, or 95.7 pounds. Really, this isn't out of line with real results. This giant wing here could only pull 26 kilograms of downforce at 110 k's an hour. Hell, even the Bugatti Veyron's rear spoiler is claimed to only generate 100 kilos at 400 k's an hour. Now, all of this isn't that unreasonable, when you consider that this 500 gram model helicopter has to spin the tips of its blades at over 400 k's an hour just to get it off the ground. Now what does this mean in terms of performance? It means that if we place the wing at the most efficient point, which is where the lift will get distributed equally to the front and rear tyres, we'll see an additional 22 kilos of downforce on each axle. If we assume it to be even though, it means we can approximate the car as a point. Okay, so if we approximate the car as a point travelling around a circle, we can see that the force required to keep it in that circle is mv squared on r, where r is the radius of the circle, mass of the car, velocity of the car. This is also equivalent to the grip force of the tyres, which is mu n, coefficient of friction, times normal force on the tyres. n, normal force, will equal the mass of the car, times gravity, plus the downforce. Okay, so the next phase of calculation is very boring, so I cut out the main details for you. So if we assume a 1.4 ton car entering a corner at 100 miles an hour on tyres with a coefficient of friction of 1, which is really good for a road tyre, our cornering radius at limit grip is 200.9 metres with no aerodynamics. Now, if we add a wing, the calculations work out that for the same corner, we can enter at 162.3 kilometres an hour, or 101.43 miles an hour. So with your super efficient wing, you've gained an entire 1.4 miles an hour. And you know, even that number isn't true, because you have losses that aren't shown in this equation. So basically, you're not going to feel a wing on the road. Now of course there are going to be people who are going to say, oh that rear wing strains the flow off the back and that makes it better. Think about that for a sec. You have airflow coming off here like that. That's what's going on the car. But towards the back of the car, it will separate around here. Going high, and this will be all turbulent stuff. So on most cars, your wing's not even in the free flow, so it doesn't work at all. So you see vortex generators on the Evos, which brings it back down. But let's think about it, okay? If this wing is forcing the air back up, then what's happening to the air here? It's coming down to go to the wing. What does that do? It makes lift right there, which is not great. Now, I'm not saying that the wing doesn't still have an overall positive benefit. I'm just saying that you are losing a bit there. So you're not going to get your theoretical best performance out of the wing. If you put it up here, then we're talking. Basically, what this all means is that while you may be able to feel the difference of these small little wings on a race car, maybe, you're definitely not going to feel it on the road. I mean, how often are you going to be cornering at 100 miles an hour at limit grip on road? It's not going to happen. If you want a race car, put a bigger wing on it.